Welcome to episode 90 of DYWTSB. I'm Morton. As always, I've got Queen and Pops with me tonight. Ooh, 90. Hi, everyone. It's We're 10 episodes away from 100. It's crazy. Oh. Uh, full disclosure, though, we probably have done about 103. I think about 13 of them didn't make the air. Yeah, my computer but... likes to eat audio sometimes. And sometimes they just really sucked. <laughs> There have been a couple of those. Yeah, where it's like, uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, though. We got so much going on, like, this week. Oh, Big God. wrestling week. It's Queen's friend anniversary with us this week. Awesome. On the 27th. The 27th, I believe, is our friend anniversary. Yeah. Uh... We got the uh, DYWTSB Rumble Box giveaway, which I uh, had to get a bigger box for <laughs> because <laughs> the box that I chose was not big enough. So people are going to get some cool shit in here. Mm-hmm. I just keep grabbing stuff off the shelf, throwing stuff in the box, and I had to get a bigger box. <laughs> if I don't stop, I'm going to send half of my collection. I just like giving stuff away. <laughs> so... That being said, let me give out the first 10 entrants into the DYWTSB Rumble Box. At number one, the Brock Lesnar spot, we got EPW. Oh, God, Wow. Number two, we have Jason, uh, B-L-K-T-H-R-T-D, Wind. Uh, Number three, we have Foul. Ooh. Uh, number four, we have Dusty LeBron at Nazu Grimm. Number five, who got your boy Mags? Oh, oh, Mags. Uh, number six, we got Creeper John or at Like in Jedi. Number seven, we got Chris of TT. Yeah, Turnbuckle Topics, uh, the bearded Chris. Number eight, we got good friend of the show. Man. Mr. Logan Sproul. Number nine, we got the Chicken Champ with Jay-Z Flair. And number ten, we got Rob or Why It Never Ended. So wow. I like, I like wow. that. Hand. What a nice first ten. Crazy first ten. Yeah, I mean, WWE booking almost says that EPW's got this, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So. Or well, he's got the first uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I'm, like, I'm legit when I say I had to get up in your box. So I hope everybody is happy with what I got coming to you. I would give you a spoiler, but I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> I'm a hashtag heel. Hashtag heel pop. Got... Speaking of hashtag heel pops, I had a wonderful time uh, on heel, heels pops and chair shots last night. It was crazy. Like everyone's like expect chaos and I was like ah whatever no fucking expect some chaos <laughs> Man, I'm telling you when that when that drops and people start listening to it, people I, I mean I got into full heel mode <laughs> I talked about Charlotte I talked about the women's divisions talked about Kenny Omega whoa yeah I did oh, shoot but your heel um, pops that's not a good sign <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Well, just a little snippet. I just said, you know, in Japan, he was awesome. And here, and before I could say it, they called him a caca sandwich. So, oh, I agree. Okay, just because we're, like, me and them are boys, okay? Those are my boys. They're great. But they can be wrong sometimes. I wouldn't know anything about that. But they can be wrong sometimes. <laughs> I, it's okay to be wrong. I was probably going to get my ass kicked if you heard that. But, hey, it is what it is. We have hashtag Russell Opinions, but we're still real friends without the hashtag, right? Yep, it's true. Right? Right? Yeah, okay, good. Sure. I got a confirmation on that. I was a little worried. For a <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I talked a lot of shit about Kenny Omega. It was oh, fun. Like, it was great. cool. It was like I was with like, like really good people. So ha- ha- awesome. yeah, hashtag Heel Pops on here and hashtag Heel Pops on uh, H- uh, HCP is the same thing? I also did like that they called it Heels, Pops, Pops, and Chair Shots. I like that, too. that's my name, so they had to square that shit. So, yeah. They're always, they're always fun, like, 
guys. I just, ah, that can't be really what it's like to be on their show. It's not. It's different. It's crazier than just listening to them. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. I hope everybody uh, finishes listening to this show and then switches over and listens to that episode. <laughs> and that would be so. Hell uh, yeah. I think we have some type of shit to talk about this week huh oh we do but before that how how, how was your week been so far you two been crazy busy but good how about you doing pr- pretty good crazy but good crazy but good we already know pops had a crazy week because he was on your pops chair shot so we know that was already psycho <laughs> right i agree oh no <laughs> you're welcome no god help me no, I've had an interesting week. The weather out here is crazy, so at my work, people that I work with are a little crazy because it's cold as hell and houses are hot as shit. No one can go outside because it's freezing. Other than that, it's been interesting. It's been fun. I feel like I lost about five hours of my life, though, this week that I'll never ever get back watching what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh Uh-oh. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. All right. How about the highs of Monday Night Raw? Let me roll up my sleeves. All right. (laughs) Highs of Monday Night Raw. Okay. Well, first of all, this ladder match... With Rey Mysterio and Andrade was unbelievably good. And my first thought was, why, why isn't this on Sunday? But right. that's okay. We'll get to that a little later. Um, this was amazing. They have such great chemistry together. Um, more, I know that you were really hoping that we'd get the hair versus mask fight. Um, I, I really wish that that's what we were getting. This was a good substitute be for it. It was a good substitute. But it, could you imagine at Mania, it'd be so red, red, red hot. Oh, yeah. But um, it is what it is. This match was excellent. The bumps that Ray was taking were Fucking out of insane. control. Totally nuts. I even thought the use of Zelina for the first time I actually liked. Because I just don't really like her very much. But having her come out and sit on top of that ladder and be like, no, homie, you're not getting this title. I was like, oh, perfect use of her. Loved that. And, um, jeez, <laughs> uh, Samoa Joe had a great braid. And putting everything else aside for a second, the actual match, like the wrestling with Rollins and Buddy versus the Viking Raiders, War Raiders, uh, actually I thought was great. But everything else of the story I hated. But the actual wrestling I thought was good. <laughs> Uh, I think that was the only thing that I liked in that three hours. I also lo- loved, loved, loved the ladder match between Andrade and Rey Mysterio. It's like, like, like I just said, it, it was a good substitu- substitute for my mask versus hair match bet- between the two. And honestly, I, I, I liked the War Raiders siding with Samoa Joe and KO. Because to me, that's that would be another badass faction. Because those four together are just fucking would be a team of fucking bruisers sure would and that those were my two highs for monday night Raw. oh boy this is gonna be rough pops uh, <laughs> help us out anything i agree oh, oh no geez. oh no we're, 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 we're going <laughs> in on raw aren't we we're here's in. the thing like like i oh wait what, 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 one more thing i, I like the way Liv was dressed for that match yeah I wasn't expecting Queen to say anything about Zelina, and I was going to brag about how Zelina actually did her job for once. Shocking, right? Like, the whole the whole match, like, her facial expressions throughout the whole thing sold the brutality of the whole, like, the whole, that was a clusterfuck. Yep. But a beautiful clusterfuck. Damn, that's two of them. 
Mm. Oh, did I swear yet? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, yes! <laughs> Can I get a try hard? That's what she said. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> All right. So let's go in on this. Who wants to go first? Mort, let's. Mort, let's switch it up. You go first. Yeah, you go first, Mort. Oh, okay. Um, I, 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 I hated the fact that Matt Hardy was used as a fucking jobber for, for Eric Rowan of all fucking people. Um, I hated the fact that Ricochet got punked out. Hated, 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 the, hated the Becky Lynch Kyrie uh, Sane match because it was what we thought it was going to be. It was a Kyrie's going to be a punching bag for Becky for a warm up for Sunday. And I absolutely hated the fact that we got Bobby Lashley, cor- correction, the almighty piss break Bobby Lashley, Lana, Rusev, and Liv Morgan in the fucking main event spot of Monday Night Raw. Fuck you, Vince. Whoever the fuck books so Monday Night Raw. That's gotta be Vince's fault. Because he's, he's the ultimate say-so. That was like 35 of them in one set. <laughs> There's a lot, apparently a lot to hate. <laughs> How about you, Pops? Let's go and kind of sort of walk yeah, in reverse order. Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Well, we already discussed what I liked about the show. But I don't want to just say the rest of the show I didn't like. I mean, um, okay. Let's see. We went from Aleister Black having excellent matches with Buddy Murphy to wrestling a jobber. Cool. Thanks for that. Put him back in his room. Ask people to knock on his door or something. Uh, yeah and the almighty piss break and Lana getting priority over your tag titles which would have been a way better visual to end your show with mm-hmm. or the latter and, yeah, that too but that was a great way to open mm-hmm. though. That was, that was I'm not going to complain about that because it actually kept me watching wrong but this abomination of how they are booking Liv Morgan after building her for so long is incredulous. Ooh, Ooh. I think two words. <laughs> it's, to me, it's incredible how stupid you have to be to book a match that makes Lana look like a better wrestler than Liv Morgan. It's it's ridiculous, It's and it's scary how dumb that conference room must be. I can't even come up with really good words on this hashtag trying not to curse show, (laughs) but I just feel really bad because we all expected so much from what they were giving us from Liv through the vignettes and through social media, and then we get This. this. So with that, I will say, three hours of my life I won't get back yeah not much more I can add to this people but um, I, I'm really I'm really disappointed that this vast distaste and dislike and frankly to some levels hatred of this piss break Lana Rusev live storyline is falling on beyond deaf ears they continue to double, triple, quadruple down on this storyline. You know, there's a quote from Mean Girls that Regina says to Gretchen when Gretchen wants to make the word fetch happen. <laughs> she says, stop trying to make fetch happen, Gretchen. It's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's how I feel about the storyline. Like, let's just let it go. We're not interested in these people. I would be very interested in Rusev dominating on his own. I'd be very interested in Liv Morgan coming for Becky Lynch or coming for Asuka or coming for Kyrie or coming for anybody else. Charlotte. Anybody else, Charlotte. That's great. Let's do that. This is just such a disappointment. And why is this sending your go-home show to the Royal Rumble? It makes no sense nope. to me. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. So, uh, you know, it's just gross. It's gross. It's gross. And then Ricochet? You're going to do that to Ricochet, <laughs> dude? <laughs> he comes out and he starts saying, I'm not afraid of you, Brock Lesnar. And I'm like, oh, God, don't do it. Don't do it, Ricochet. Don't do it. <laughs> Run. <laughs> it's terrible. Run, buddy, because I can't. That just was, come on. 
These go home shows for the last several pay per views have just been abysmal. They've been getting better, I'd say, in their match qualities. But like Pop said earlier, Alistair Black finding some random person after he just had those classics with Buddy Murphy. What's the point of that? Going Get, backwards. There's no one else in the back. What I oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, I gotta stop because it's so annoying. I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right, how about the next ten for the DYW TSB Rumble Box? Yeah, we can go there. That's something fun. Yeah. All right. So number eleven, we have Antonic. Uh, number twelve, we have Mr. Matt Granberry. Number thirteen, we have my close personal friend Damian. Number fourteen, we have Oliver Larkin. Number fifteen, we have Mr. RJ. Number sixteen, we have OK Fabon Fight. Seventeen is I'm Ted Blanchard. Eighteen is our close personal friend and graphic artist for the show, Mr. Chris. Number nineteen, we have the big Thorbowski. And number twenty, who I revealed to them last night, they are Mr. Hills, Hops, and Chair Shots. At hey! Right. All right, next 10. Very good. All right, and how about the highs of AEW Dynamite that was on the Chris Jericho cruise this week? Oh, my God. We're on a boat. We're on a boat. Lonely Island, all through my head this entire show. <laughs> I just couldn't get over... Where we were last year with the Jericho Cruise to where we are now (laughs) with the Jericho Cruise. This man brought TNT onto a boat. (laughs) It was great. Can Chris Jericho not do anything? I don't know. Is there anything he can't do? Nope. He's the greatest of all time. Oh, my God. So cool. Um, There's a lot to like here. I love that MJF got thrown in a pool. (laughs) That was was my favorite thing. (laughs) Loved that. Um, I really enjoyed Mox versus Pac. That has a lot of potential to be amazing and continue to be an amazing feud. I know it was for the number one contender, and it was a little obvious, I think, that Mox was going to win, but that's okay. Those two are awesome, and I just want to see them fight more. So I'm into that. Um, And I, I just think overall the show was really, really fun, and I had fun watching it. There really was only a couple things that I was like, mm, nah. Um, but I think my favorite part was Hangman finally being a complete and total bad boy and just came out to play, chugging beers with fans. I wish I could be that cool. <laughs> Sliding out of the ring with his new belt, drinking that dude's beer. It was like the coolest. This is what I wanted from Hangman for a really, really long time. And when he was building towards the challenge for the title with Jericho, I I just, I remember being like, I just can't get behind this guy. Like, I want to get behind him. I like him. But but something's something's disconnected me. And for most of AEW's tenure on television, I felt that way. Until he started this pull away from the elite, the the drinking thing, embracing the cowboy-ish, doing that whole side. And teaming with Kenny, I think, has brought out a completely different side of him that I really like and I think works really well. I think he missed up with the promo with Private Party, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. But I think that he, right now, is red hot. And I know we don't really like throwing together tag teams, and I don't like that. We've talked about it on last week's show about how much we have a a huge in-depth tag team vision, so I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I think it was really cool that we've had our first title change. And that's my highs. My overall high for the show uh, was the six-man tag, the Inner Circle versus uh, Jurassic Express. I thought it was a really fun match. It it, it was just the the, the, the dynamic between these six was great. I love the contrast between the super baby faces of Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy and their interaction with the inner circle and you d- they've got their dinosaur that's just a fucking badass and, and, and other than the conclusion of the match I also enjoyed the ta- uh, AEW tag team match 
I just didn't like the fact that that SCU lost the belts to a makeshift tag team, even though they've been part of the elite for years at this point. It's still they're 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 not a solid tag team to, in my eyes, and I love the fact and I love MJF getting thrown in a, in a pool. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. How about you, pops? I really enjoyed Pac versus Moxley or Scotty Riggs or uh, I guess it was Moxley who was there. That was about it. Ooh. I think. Pop, I mean, I think Pop and Queen are the six fight. man was cool. The six man was cool, but it, I guess it just didn't do as much for me as it did for everybody else. All right, and how about the lows of AEW? I love Priscilla <sighs> Kelly very much. I was thrilled to see her. And then Britt Baker came out, and I was not happy. <laughs> and I went, oh, no. And it went like I thought it was going to go. Did you guys know that the she's a worst... dentist? <laughs> it wasn't the worst wrestling match I've ever seen. But it wasn't great. But my real problem was afterwards. Huh. We've seen the progression of, well, I, I guess lack of progression in good promos from her. And it continues to kind of get worse. She sounded so nervous, not sure of herself, and then they, like, turned her heel out of nowhere mm-hmm. on a boat. I don't know why. Like, why are we doing this? Like, we're on a boat. We don't need to turn her heel yet. Like, you could work towards that, <laughs> you know? And then my – I just I, – I really thought the whole thing was weird. Like, why is she pulling the I'm better than you card? Like, what is happening? And the Tony Schiavone, I, I can't. Oh, that was actually one of the things I liked when he was mouthing what the F. thought that was great. Right. Um, but this promo was just so bad. Like, when your announce team and commentary have to cut you off. That's a problem. I think that's I, that's not good. And I don't know why they continue to put her in this position if she's not ready for it. Put someone else in the position. Or just, like, don't have her do it and give her some training on maybe how to do them a little bit better or how to be at ease in front of people. I don't know. Something's not right. And this was the first time I really felt bad for her. Like I was watching that and I was like, this is horrifying. Um, And I I just didn't like that at all. And the other thing that I didn't really care for, I guess that SCU lost with only one pay-per-view defense. That bothers me a little bit. I would have hoped that they wouldn't have lost him now. I knew they were going to lose them eventually, right? Um, I sort of understand why Kenny and Paige have been red hot, right? People have been behind that. They like that. They're obviously pushing it for a reason with the storyline. It's going to break apart the elite officially, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I'm torn because I, I like the story of Hangman right now, and I think that's really cool. But I'm sad that they took the tag team titles at the same time. So it's kind of a weird conundrum that I'm in because they have a great tag team division that they're not really utilizing right now for the titles. And that's something I really would like to see. But they are going with this storyline, and I like the storyline with Hangman. Not so much Kenny. And I love Kenny very much, um, but I'm not really sure why he's tagging with Hangman. I don't know. It's really weird. It's convoluted. And I think that's the part of it that I was like, oh, that's a bummer. But I thought the match itself was great. But th- that's where I'm at the bummer. Mm-hmm. How about you, Mark? I would I would agree with the, with those two lows, and I'm gonna add the fact that Joey Janela doesn't connect with me, and I know that's gonna get get a lot of hate from a lot, a lot of people, especially on, on wrestling Twitter. But he, I I maybe I just don't understand his character. It I, I get he's 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 a bit of a scumbag, but that 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 rings as a heel to me. Kick his ass. That doesn't ring as a baby face to me. Mm. How about you, Pops? I'm going to pair it clean, because this is why I didn't like the Hangman and Kenny win. Because we can all see where they're going with Hangman, and I don't think they needed the tag titles to get there. Right. Um, Sure. Utilize a tag team. You have a tag team division. Use one of them. You can get to this elite split without taking the titles off of a legit tag team. So it kind of ruined it for me. The match was great, sure, but it just, the whole thing just is like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I, too, was super excited to see Priscilla Kelly, and then I was just deflated because I'm like, great, there's Britt Baker, and 
and then the promo happened and I've had a day to think about it and there's a reason they signed her number one, right? That was their number one woman that they signed. I think she's trying to get out of her contract. I think, and I might be wrong, but nobody can go from being as good as she was on the indies to completely horseshit on TV. It just, just doesn't make sense to me. So it just rings as somebody that's just trying to get out of their contract or they're just going to bury her until she's done with her contract. Just keep her off TV. It's really, really bad when your number one draft pick gets cut off to go to commercial. And Janela, Janela, I like Joey. I just think that right now in this company, he's wrestling with like handcuffs. He's not allowed to be, you know, the bad boy. And, and then you throw in, it was, it was a decent match. I thought it was a pretty fun match. But then like, I could think it was like, ugh, X's. It really <laughs> fucks it up. You know? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Warren Hayes, not to interrupt you, but Mr. Warren Hayes tweeted out that, uh, in quotes, uh, we thought that Bobby and uh, Lana kiss worked so well. Da, da, da. Right. And I was like, oh, so true. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> so it's just like, it was... I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a fun show. It was just the we stupid jumped. things really just kind of brought it down for me. I enjoyed it more than Raw, but, you know. That's not saying much. Yeah. Mm. I'm just, it's, it's like, I don't hate it as much as I hated, like, last week's. I'm just, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I really like good stories, and I think they're trying to overbook their television shows right now. They're trying to put a hundred different stories out there because they're a new company and they don't need to do that. Let's, let's, let's have one that makes sense. Maybe two, two. And then put on some decent matches where maybe in the fans mind, the story builds, you know, let's give us story, a few storylines with hashtag continuity. Uh, well, the one thing I will say about AEW is their continuity and their, it, it, it's a hell of a lot better than the other company. Yep. Because they, they do focus on it. I mean, this whole hangman thing has been going on for months, at this I point. Mean, months, months, you know. It, I guess I really would have liked to see SCU hang on to those titles. A little longer. Yeah, because you could have done the split. You could have had you could have had Omega take the loss and Paige just flip out. And you could have done the split that way. You don't need to slot the titles on to, for them to split that way. It just seems like really old booking. Mm-hmm. Like you can see where it's going. One of them, you know, Kenny's gonna get pinned and Paige is gonna go off. That's what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm calling it right now. It might not happen. It's probably gonna happen at Revolution. And then they'll finally split, and then we'll get, you know, a two to three month program out of that, and then eventually we'll get what we really want, which is Kenny versus Pack, and then Kenny challenging for the title. I mean, because that's what we want, right? Mm-hmm. I want a long Kenny chase, but I don't know. He made a weird comment. That he's he did everything he really wanted to do in his last run in New Japan, right? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think they'll do it, but I don't know. He really wants to focus on the women's division, which desperately needs help. Well, I, he can't do it by himself. No. <laughs> they need a team. So um, I don't know what they're going to do with that. I hope so. I hope so. Because Kenny and the Chase is a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's either let him chase for the title or take him off TV and let him really fix this women's debacle that they have going on because it's horrible. I don't think he's ready to go off TV just yet, but they need some help with the women's division. That's but if he, goes, if he goes off of TV for four weeks and really, really digs in and gets a good team around him, they can turn that women's division around. And he doesn't really miss anything because, yeah, he's gone for four weeks, but during those four weeks, he's, they can build somebody else and, and, who and, hasn't been on TV. And, and you and, and you can have Pac go, go off with, in promos being like, where's Kenny? You could have, you know, after Jericho's done defending the title, you could have him just start dropping stupid comments about Kenny, like, oh, Kenny's too afraid of me, blah, blah, blah. You can just start building that that way without even seeing Kenny for four weeks and then start to chase. And then you got a whole nother 
what three months before their next pay per view if they're going to do one a quarter. I don't know. I want to see Kenny. I want to see Kenny as the world champion. I, 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 I would be very sad if if that didn't happen, and I'll be very angry if Cody becomes their world champion before Kenny does because of I will be too. Yeah, because of this. And, and actually, speaking of this, of this step, I uh, just had something pop up into in, into my head how, how they eventually get around the I I won't challenge for the. Uh, the, the, the title if I, if I lose the match you'll have one of his boys in the elite challenge him stating that I, I, I want to know how good I really am I need to beat Cody for the title yeah sure Kenny and Cody you could be a ready made feud anyway mm-hmm. they have that past history anyway with the whole Bullet Club Bullet Club is fine storyline I just think that they're overthinking right now Sure. Before they signed the extension on TNT, I can understand. But now they're solid for like three years. So now let's 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 just take a deep breath, collect ourselves, and 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 then move on. Well, maybe we will now that the cruise is over. <laughs> right? Yeah. Jeez, I hope so. I hope so. I like that they were on a boat though. That's so cool. And I, and, I, and I guess they're gonna broadcast live from next year's cruise. Hell yeah! If I wasn't seasick, I'd be there. But no, ma'am. So I mean, I don't really—I didn't mean to like crap on the show during the you know highlight moments, but some of the really bad stuff just drug the whole show down for me. All right, and on a better note, how about you give us the final ten of the DYW TSB Rumble Box? All right. Well, at twenty-one, we have Mister Ray Sanchez at Ray underscore Ramnudo. Number 22, we have Kurt Allen Kilberg. Number 23 will be Michael Finch. 24 is Dave Anderson. 25 is Michael V. Barton. 26 is Metal. 27 is Kevin Carroll. 28 is Bro Rogan. Nice. I mean, how did that happen? Right. Uh, number 29 is Good Guy Dave, and he is a good guy. He wants to be your friend, so don't be a dick to him, okay? I mean that. I've seen too many things yeah, being rudely good. said to that guy, and he is super he's a, nice. Dude. He's a good, good guy. And number thirty, coming in with that money spot, Mister Josh Robinson. Oh, oh. Josh Ray, with the number thirty pull. Shoot, who's twenty-seven? Kevin Carroll. Oh my God! <laughs> Same podcast. Nice. <laughs> reverb. Oh shoot! They're gonna freak out. Um, if anyone has a dispute about their entry number, I have video of me clicking the randomizer seven times. You'll even hear my beautiful voice on that video. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but I do have to mention that uh, we had a late entry into the rumble box giveaway so i gave mr J- jim hayes um or at big jimbo extreme the chance to call the winner and he would get a surprise uh, a prize if he won and he said that finn balor is going to win the rumble hmm, interesting and then in 10 weeks we might do something for the episode 100 but i don't know what we're going to do yet we'll get back to you in 10 episodes <laughs> we'll see how- We'll see how full this box gets this weekend. True. Speaking of this weekend, what are we doing this weekend? What are we, we watching? We yeah. have the Royal Rumble to watch, number one. Ugh, that's number four. <laughs> <laughs> I have FSW, GCW, H2O, NWA, boxing, MMA, something. I don't know. There's a lot going on. <laughs> right, 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 right. And then uh, this week, let's see. So, yeah, Friday, GCW, NWA. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take a quick nap. H2O is on Saturday, right? Or is yeah. that on a Friday? Well, no, I'm pretty sure that's on the 25th as well, Saturday. Okay. okay pretty sure. Cool. They got Worlds Collide. So, right there, we got at least 8 to 12 hours of really good wrestling. Wait, I got more for you. Four promotions. Just, I'm just saying, these four promotions. What else you got for me? Queenie is going to Northeast Wrestling. Oh. 
Nice. Okay, which is also going to be streamed live, I think. So you can go to their Twitter, check that out. But uh, I'm going to see G.O.D. in a high school gym. <laughs> yes, I am. And Marty Skrull versus the Horror King. And Darby Allen, who's the champion, by the way, of Northeast Wrestling. Uh, and Flip Gordon's going to be there. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Flip Gordon is going to be there on Saturday? Yeah. Because isn't he challenging Nick Aldis this on Friday? I guess so. That's a hell of a schedule. Yeah. Maybe flip, Nicole flip, show up. Flip, flip. I hope so. I'd lose my mind. There's so a lot there of wrestling go. people. We got a lot of wrestling. Yes. People. And then on Sunday, if you haven't had enough wrestling, you're going to get a 39-hour Royal Rumble, including 39. the pre-show. <laughs> we're going to get 39. a. We're going to get a two-day Royal Rumble. <laughs> yes, with no piss breaks. Except for when Bobby Lashley is out there. Oh, God, hopefully he's not. I'll probably be in the Rumble watch. <laughs> Dude, if he wins, imagine this, okay, before we get into our picks. I just want to I want to spit a scenario to you guys. What if Bobby Lashley wins the Men's Royal Rumble and Lana wins the Women's Royal Rumble? Fuck no. What, like, mind blown, right? Let me tell you what will happen if that happens. The Twitter, wrestling Twitter will explode. Everybody that's listening to this show right now, hear me. I've said this plenty of times. Lashley and Lana win the Rumble. I'm canceling the show. No, 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 no. We're not canceling the show. No, no, no. I'm going to cancel this show. No. No, I'm going to cancel it. <laughs> no, what? Yeah, we cancel it. What do you mean? I would be done with it. We'll just do a different show. Okay, we'll cancel right. this show, and we'll change it to, like, now this show is happening because American Piss Break and Lana won the Rumble show. <laughs> It'll be like a really long name. The, the show that can't be DYWTSB because Pop, Pops is a dumbass and put a stipulation on, on, on the Rumble matches. Right. <laughs> wait. Wait, hold on. Did I just agree to me being a dumbass? Yep. Eh, eh. It fits. <laughs> oh, my God. Please don't let that happen. I will. I will definitely stop watching WWE. That's right. it. Like, I'm done. Well, and the, but then here's the thing: we'll have to cancel because then I'll have to what? I'll have to watch AEW and talk about that. And NXT. I've been working on trying to figure out how to watch two wrestling programs at the well, same. Well, you stop watching Raw, right? And then you have to watch Wednesday nights. You could pick which one you want to watch live, and then watch the other one Thursday before we record. Boom, done. So this is why I keep you around, Queen. Mm-hmm. Make my life. You're welcome. Like, Thank you. And Wait, I also my I agree. <laughs> ah, those are my lines. Well, freaking walk right into gimmicks. that one. Can I do? <laughs> so anyway, we can have lots of fun here, but why don't we get into our Royal Rumble picks? Hey everyone, it's your girl, the Queen of NE, and I'm so excited to tell you about my show, Queen's Court. It's an awesome fun, super interactive podcast led by yours truly, bringing you some awesome interviews, some great collabs, and just enjoying discussing our beloved sport of wrestling. You can find me on Twitter at the Queen of Any, on Instagram at X the Queen of Any, and of course my podcast, Queen's Court, on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are out. I encourage you to come take a listen to something new, something fresh, and something that you can only have when you hold court with the queen. First match I've got listed is Andrade versus uh, Humberto Carrillo in a singles match for the WWE United States Championship. Which should have been him versus Ray on the ladder, but here we are. I will go with Andrade because if they put it on Humberto, I'm just, I just can't with my life. I can't. Hashtag and still. I'm going to go with Andrade because it should have been his son under the mask. I know. Uh, Humberto? Do we care? Nope. Killing that kid. He's way too green for that. First of all, I didn't even remember who he was when they took the mask off. Everybody's excited. And I'm like, who the hell is that? Who was excited? Commentary because they faked it? Well, I mean, like, the three people that saw him take the mask off in the front row were super excited. <laughs> and then the the 97 people behind those three people were like, who the hell is that? And they're like, oh, that Plants, guy. they're plants, that's yep. it. Yes. 
they were like that guy. He did something cool one time on that other show before they canceled it, and then should have stayed. They brought him over here and got beat up by AJ Styles for a couple of weeks. Anyway, moving on. Th- then we've got Shorty G versus Sheamus in a singles match. Oh, this is a tough one. Oh. If there's any sure bet on this show, it's that Sheamus is going to be winning. Yep. So there's that. <laughs> Shorty G is not winning this match. Not in that outfit. He's not. Oh. <laughs> He's a great wrestler, though. This is a disservice. Speaking of outfits, did you guys hear the rumor? Well, I guess it's not really a rumor because Seamus said it, that when they wanted him to wear suspenders when he came back. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, I swear I read that somewhere that he said that uh, when he was coming back, the the creative wanted him to wear suspenders. And he's like, Fuck nah, that. that ain't happening. <laughs> like he's some big freaking leprechaun or something. He's oh a God. badass. Can like, you just you choke them with the suspenders? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Seamus on this one. All right. Then, then we've got Bailey versus Lacey Evans in a singles match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I think we're seeing a title change here, boys. I think they're going to pull the trigger on Lacey Evans. I could see a theory. I could hear an argument for Sasha interfering, helping Bailey retain. So they build... Lacey to do the John Cena thing, right? Or the Roman Reigns thing where they have to defy all the odds to get to Mania and then you get the Mania moment with her and her kid. I could hear that argument. In fact, that argument was made by Mr. Bill Botkin on the Bob Culture podcast. And I I hear you, Bill. I hear you, buddy. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we're going to get a title change here because I don't think we're getting it anywhere else. So there's that. As much as I despise Lacey as a heel, I love babyface Lacey. It's better. It way is. Way better. Ha- hashtag and new. And I say way better because that's what I get out of it, listening to the Mort Report weekly, because right. I don't watch that shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's, it's Friday, right? Right. I don't think about watching SmackDown on Friday. I think about watching it on Tuesday. I'm not conditioned yet. They screwed me over on it. Yep. <laughs> they screwed us all. But no, Lacey is a baby face. You get the bravado of a badass fucking Marine whooping some ass, and I love it. And then you get the mom angle, too. I still don't like her, but it's definitely better than her as a heel. That's for sure. Leaps and bounds better. Yep. Should have come out as this from the beginning. Yeah. And Bailey's just not hasn't been translating at all. Nope. What does everyone call her? Karen? Karen. Karen. Yeah, can I that? speak to your manager, Karen? It's like a forties Midwest mom who complains about everything. Then I need to speak to your manager because they charge me two percent extra tax. <laughs> so, I know so many people around here that do that. Or like try to use an expired coupon. And right. then like, manager. And like, oh my <laughs> yeah. God, I can't believe you want let me use this coupon. It's only expired by one day. Yeah. Like, oh, all the time. It's yes. like, bitch, it's fifty cents. Is it that? Like, I'll give you fifty cents so I can check out. I don't <laughs> want to be in this line anymore. We don't have to wait for, for, Bumble the freaking manager to walk his b- big butt from the freaking back room all the way to the cash <laughs> register to tell you that you're not gonna get your fifty cent coupon redeemed. Now you know why I can't stand Bailey like this. <laughs> Right, like I totally know those people. You finally turn this girl heel, and this is what, what? you tell her to do. Yeah. I they can't. Didn't, they didn't even but turn her. Yeah, she's they're just like the worst. Like you need right. to go be a bad guy, but don't be a real bad guy. Because toy sales. First of all, let's talk about toy sales real quick. The Walmart. I hope you're listening because your toy department and Sucks. your toy manager suck. You ha- you cannot have. 15 empty pegs and think you're going to sell wrestling figures to the collectors around here. You just damn head, a-hole. You mean you don't want 80 million Roman Reigns? There's not even 80 million Roman Reigns. I'm legit. There's zero action figures on pegs. <laughs> right now, actually, I lied. Today I went there. There was a Ultimate Warrior uh, Master of the Universe figure. There was a Finn Balor Master of the Universe figure. And there was, like, a bunch of the crappy little plastic belts and, like, four Master of the Universe uh, rings without the figures, 
which is selling for more than you can find the ones with the figures on clearance. Wow. But nothing else. For a while, for like a week, there was a really shitty Bret Hart figure on the peg. And finally someone was like, all right, Bret, I'm going to take you home. Because (laughs) maybe then they'll restock these damn pegs. (laughs) (laughs) Own up to it. This conversation is wild. Own up to it. You're the one that took Bret home, aren't you? I did not. I refused because it was this crappy one that had like hair in his face, like he was some crappy rock star, or or like he had pasta noodle that was like 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 a oh my god like a squid like a squid ink pasta noodle. No, no, on no. His no. Face. We only throw pasta against the cabinets. We don't throw it at people's face. Right, we never, make sure pasta. It's good. never. Right. Hey, I'm, speaking of throwing the pasta at the cabinets to make sure that it's done. Y'all don't waste that piece of pasta, do you? Hell no. I put... Hell no. You eat oh, that. That's how you know. Hey, you eat that shit. It like, sticks. you stick it. You're like, oh, is it really done? I should taste test yep. this really Stop. quick. <laughs> oh, it's done. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page there. Get the sauce. Right. Uh... This is off the rails. All right. Can we move on? Is it ever on the rails? No. Well, kind of. It used to be. <laughs> But wow. now we're hashtag screwing things up because it's fun. All right. Then, then we've got Roman Reigns versus King Corbin in a false count anywhere match. This is still going on. Yep. This is like. It is the bane of my Friday fucking night. It's like month 47. <laughs> my existence and I don't even watch. <laughs> I'm going to go with Corbin just because it's probably not going to happen. I'm going with Corbin because I think it is going to happen. Because they hate me. And they're going to do it just to spite me because I can't stand Barrett Corbin. Just, Roman rarely loses, but I think this is the time because I think something else is coming for him later. Just because it's a pay-per-view, LOL, Roman wins. Hey, I have an idea. Let's talk about Roman. God damn it. Let's, no, let's just talk about Roman. What if he feuds with The Fiend, right? Then, and the, that, then no, the Fiend fucking loses. Follow me on this, though. Just follow me. Follow Pops. No. Walk no. Me. Take a walk with Pops. Let's go on a daddy journey real quick, okay? All right, what? Let's say Roman feuds with The Fiend, right? And The Fiend beats him. Yeah. Okay? Given what has happened to everybody that The Fiend has beaten, maybe Roman would come back with some new pants and a different shirt. (laughs) No. And maybe He's going to be John Cena forever. Oh, that is an insult to John Cena. I will not let you sully the good character. I'm talking John... about the outfit never changing, you weirdo. I'm talking about his wrestling. Uh, first of all, at least John Cena had Fruity Pebble colors for t-shirts. <laughs> and he changed the sneakers. Okay. Roman has weird... Wow. His... Weird. Oh, my God. Listen to me. <laughs> Roman has worn the same zipper cargo pants and... Just because he's not a real chest protector anymore, his t-shirt still looks like one. He is shield Roman when the shield is... I mean, you got baby Jesus, you got crazy one-eyed mocks, and then you got shield Roman Reigns. Somebody is living in the past. And Jesus it, was on a Jericho cruise last night. <laughs> he was. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> got, it gave Joey Janelle a blessing. It was amazing. Sorry. Sidetrack. Because I can't stand Seth Rollins. Anywho. I must have fast forwarded through that part. <laughs> Be quiet. All right. That, that, then we have Becky Lynch versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. Going to be my one of my favorite matches of the night. If should not be. my favorite match of the night. It should be. I think this is going to be a treat for everybody. I think Becky's going to wrestle very well here with her. I think they're going to really show out. And I think Asuka will come close, but ultimately Becky will retain. She's got a story to tell in a couple months. Old prediction. This is is where Becky finally gets to beat Asuka. I agree. I would love Asuka to win, don't get me wrong. But I think they've already hinted at what they want for Mania. We're too close to Mania. I think it's too close. She could win it back at Elimination Chamber, but like, why? I I just think they'll keep it. Because I think other things are coming down the pike. People? What do they miss that they're hinting at? She's tall, blonde. Woo! And it's gonna beat her her daddy daddy's record at some point. Listen, this I'll is what I want. I'll talk about it later. I'm gonna go with Oscar 
because I want Becky to beat Asuka at Mania. I Because I, I think this feud can go another three, four months. I think it'd be great, but I don't know. I don't know if they'll pull the trigger. Rose, I mean, they've really no, they've been known for the last, you know, five, six years, just totally giving it to the fans where they don't want it. How many you piss break? Somebody might want it, but... Yeah. Oh, geez, I just said that out loud. Now I think Bobby Lashley and Honor are going to come true. <laughs> so if it happens, this is all your fault? Yep. But also, low-key thanks, because I can't keep watching this trash. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Can you imagine Lana in the main no, event at stop. WrestleMania? No, stop. Worst I'm main event vomit. ever. I mean, <laughs> swear, stop it. <laughs> Trying really hard. She's the best wrestler in the world. Bullshit. She's a oh, super she mom. screams it every time she's out there. I'm a, I'm, a I, I'm a better wrestler than Lana. I'm a better wrestler than Lana. <laughs> I probably am not. Cause my I would just use the Big sucks. Show's KO punch thing. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> gotta go. All right, what else we got? Then uh, we've got Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan for the Universal Championship. I believe the Fiend will be victorious here. I think Daniel Bryan will come very close, but ultimately, not a mess. Hashtag and still, and I'm going to... I think I, I'm not sure if I said this in audio form, but I think I'm, I, I definitely said it on Twitter. The only only way Fiend loses a match is if they fuck with the red light. What do you mean? He's he's alluded to alluded on Twitter that part of the Fiend's power in ring has something to do with the lighting. The only way he's going to lose the title is in screwing somebody screwing with the lights. Hmm, interesting. Would the show be over if they kill the Fiend? Because it started with Bray Wyatt's terrible booking? No, it'll just continue because it's more Bray Wyatt's terrible booking. Well, somebody has to beat the Fiend, right? Right. It just can't be yet. Why? Black. Sorry. Why, does it, why can't it be yet? Let's talk about Finn that. Balor. Because it Sorry. needs to happen at Mania. Sorry. Big moment. Can you imagine Bray's entrance as the champion? As the Fiend? Sickening. With that Mania? stupid title. Who cares? He's coming out with a lantern and probably other, like, disfigured, crazy things. What about life-size rambling rabbits? I'm just thinking out of the box here. Like the fun house set up at Mania. No, yeah. Not only that, but have the fun house on one side. And then, and then the, the crazy Wyatt, burning one. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Wyatt um, set up with, like, the rocking chair. And then just have like a, a lamb and then a, a dark lamb mask on, like two big dudes that aren't Rowan and Harper because they need to go if they haven't left already. Harper's already <laughs> left. Harper's, Harper's already gone. <laughs> and then, like, that would be sick. See? Yeah. Big things sick. here. He can't lose. He has to be the champion of Mania. He has okay, to be. But are, are we getting the Fiend or are we getting Bray Wyatt? We, we are getting the We're Fiend. We're getting Fiend. I really should watch the show, but. Eh. I don't have to because I get a good like 10, 15 minute report on it every week on the Mort Report. More, more like five to ten, but that's beside the point. Well, sometimes it takes me a long time to listen to it because I got to pause it because people want to talk to me. I don't get five minutes of silence. Uh, all right, then we've got the women's Royal Rumble match. Warrior yeah, Rumble we do. Um, I think we see return of Nia Jax here. I think we see some fun nostalgia. I think we see NXT people okay. coming on down. And um, my dark horse to win is Shayna Baszler. My easy layup without thinking is Charlotte Flair. So, um, I mean, you know, really the only thing she hasn't done are the tag titles, which they don't really care about, so why would they put her in it? And the Rumble. So, I think she needs to hold all cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Give her all the accolades. All, give her everything. Yeah. So, that's like the easy one that I could totally see happening because, you know, Mania, Charlotte, Becky one-on-one, -on -one, remember how much we wanted that? Mm -hmm. And we didn't get that. Yeah. didn't get Ronda, right? Um... They never got it. And it's kind of like Rock Austin. It's your fail-safe. It's your will-deliver. It's your big-money match. It'll be good. 
But I would love Shayna Baszler to come in, get rid of Charlotte, then it's Shayna Becky, and then maybe we get a Ronda appearance later down the road, and we get the four horsewomen thing happening, and then the turn. Oh, it's going to be great. I just want this to happen. We booked SummerSlam, guys, last year so well that I'm, I'm not over it. And I just want it to happen <laughs> at some point. Hmm. So I'm trying to book this into existence until I, I no longer can make that happen. I will continue to try. <laughs> so that's that's what I think. What so about you're you guys? taking either Charlotte or Shayna. Shayna's my dark horse. but you can I have two picks. Picking, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, because, you know, it's Rumble. It's kind of hard. Kind of hard, but um, I have my easy pick, my gut, and then my dark horse. My heart wants Nikki Cross, but I she's just not going to. Unfortunately, she's flat right now, and there's no heat behind her. The e- you're right. The easy layup is Charlotte because why not? She's a player. But and my dark horse is Liv Morgan. Okay, solid. Well, Pops. see, my thing with Charlotte is if they're gonna give it her a rumble win. She needs to repeat what her dad did. Sure. You know, in 92. So I don't see that happening. Um, she's a really super easy pick. But if... I'm just going to go, like, way out on, like, a limb here. Go for it. And I'm going to say, like, Alexa or Sasha Banks. Because nobody will see Alexa coming, and there's a lot of people that really, really would love to see Sasha. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine? And then she could challenge Bailey. whomever, well, or Lacey, or yeah. whatever. Uh huh. We think Lacey's gonna win, or right. Bailey, or would she come back <laughs> raw? I don't know. What right. possibilities? But I do like. I think it's too early for a live, but I think it would be cool. But I do like Shayna because I want to see Shayna versus Becky more than I want to see Becky versus Charlotte. Me too. Mm-hmm. I think it's so. more interesting story. There's a lot of heat there, and Shayna is Shayna, and that's a big deal. Here, here's my reasoning to have Liv as my dark horse. It gets her the fuck away from this bullshit storyline. Yeah, but the, it, here, like I said They're going to keep going with this, I think. The more they keep getting, like, 4 million views on their YouTube page with this Lana Bobby stuff, they're going to keep doing it because we might hate it, but people are watching it. it sucks. Stop, Stop watching, watching it, people. Yes. I beg of you. I beg of you. All right. And the last match is the Men's Royal Rumble. Guys, I'm not as excited about this one. Because of Brock Lesnar. Partially because of Brock Lesnar, but partially because I'm, I don't really have a lot of connection to a lot of people that are going to be in here. Like I just don't care enough. Like I'm excited to see some of the NXT guys show out, but I don't know. I don't really know. I feel like Roman Reigns is going to win. I think Drew McIntyre will be in the final four. I just don't think they're going to push him. Um, I feel like Roman's been out of the title picture for a long time, and now I think they might want to put him back. And I think if Corbin wins, gives him extra incentive to go in the Rumble and whoop um, and do his thing. But I, I don't – this is the one that I'm like, I don't know, like, who's the guy? Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has always been the guy. I, I don't need him to be the guy anymore. Right. Uh, you know, and his Monday Night Messiah stuff is just – I can't. But – um you know, like, who who else is the guy? Who are your surprises here? Edge? I mean, I don't he, know. I love Edge, and it would be I cool love to him see, too, but... It'd, it'd be cool to see him come back, but for his sake, I really hope he doesn't. I, I just... Well, I, I don't see the point in that, but the, whatever. Because the, the, the way he went out, he went out on top. Why yeah. Why that up? Um, I know a lot of people are thinking punk, but I don't know. That would be a way to get his 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 WrestleMania main event that he wants. It, it would be, it would be, but he would have to eat a lot of words. Yep, a lot of them, and a hey. lot of actions and Love. building bridges. But listen, money talks and exactly. talks, right? Yes. So, um, you know, it's possible. We hear that music. It's possible. 
Um, if that if he comes out, then I think he's winning, and I think we'll get Punk at Mania, which will be the end of the story. You know, will John Cena return? Probably. I know he's got a lot of movies going on, but just for the pop, and then go off and do what you got to do. See, this is tough, you guys. I don't really care enough right now. Is my problem. This is the thing, though. Like before, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off on your picks, but like I think there's 23 confirmed for the Rumble already. Yeah, pretty sure that's what what they said last night on on heels pops and share shots but so that leaves seven spots right yep. i don't think we're gonna see nxt guys in the rumble there's 25 okay 25 confirmed uh-huh how many are from nxt none right okay. now so i don't so I think, think we're, we're gonna even, get... i don't even think we're gonna see nxt guys i think we are um uh, and interesting i'll get to it after our picks but if we do i want to see something happen but you have five spots left. You have to have surprises because you always have to have the surprise. Um, there's been a lot of talk about John Cena not wrestling for a full calendar year. So easily could see him. The punk thing is very interesting. Um, you know, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's so many different possibilities. That... I, yeah, it's hard, right? So many different possibilities, but not. we already know most of this rumble. The women, though? There's five of them. Mm-hmm. Right. That's crazy. The men we know, 20... How did I say? 25. 25? <sighs> Boy. That doesn't give us much of surprise or nope. excitement. They're giving you the excitement in the ladies, which makes me think a little bit more about stuff. But, oh, man. I feel like Roman is, again, my little layup one. <laughs> I feel like that's an easy way to go. But I don't even know who I want to win. Is that sad? I don't know who I want to win. But I I feel like NXT has to make a splash here. And I feel like like seeing Velveteen Dream again would be really dope on a Royal Rumble entrance. Just That'd saying. Cool. So is that a pick? That's a surprise. I'm picking Roman Reigns. Okay. So Velveteen would be the dark. No. I don't have a dark. It would be a surprise. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just so I can write it down correctly. I don't have a dark horse. I guess technically I said if Punk enters, then he's going to win. So I guess that's my dark horse. I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, but we. I don't want to give you the dark horse on... On a maybe. Uh, if. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. So we'll do the surprise for the men's. I think that's that's pretty good. Okay. All right. My... But I'll, I'll brag you up if Punk wins. How's that? You know what? Go all over the place and... Do... Oh, oh, oh. I was like, what? <laughs> My dark horse is Alistair Black, and I would and I would love to see KO take it. So yours are Black and KO? Yep. Boy, you hit answers right away. I'll pick Black as my dark horse then, since I can't have uh, maybes. <laughs> Good call, Mark. Fiend at Mania. Yes. Mm. See, I don't even know. Like, I think the obvious choice because of watching WWE for how long, that obvious to their normal booking, we'd see a Lesnar win. But I think they're going to stay away from the absolute obvious from how they normally book. I don't know. I'd really like to see, like, I don't know, AJ Styles win, I guess. I think that would be cool. That'd be fun. Um,. But my, I'm going to say my dark horse is going to be Drew McIntyre. Unfortunately, I really don't believe that's going to happen, but I would love it if it did. I think his his face heel thing that he's got going on right now is, so is kind of fun. It's weird, but it's fun. I don't I don't hate it. Um, but what I, I wanted to say real quick about uh, NXT guys coming in. If an NXT guy wins the Rumble, I want to see them challenge the NXT champion and have that be on the uh, main event at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I think okay. that would be so sick. Yes. You know, because, like, you're like, oh, it's always going to be this title or that title. But what if we had a Velveteen win or a Keith Lee come in and win sure. and say, you know what? I want the NXT champion at WrestleMania mm-hmm. in the main event. Oh. I mean, well, how sick would that be? 
it would be out of the blue. Nobody would see it coming. Oh. And, and it would leave the show, if they end with the Men's Rumble, which they typically do, that would set the show off right into Monday. It would be so cool. Dude. And, and that would legitimately put NXT on the same playing field as Raw and SmackDown. Right, which is why I'm thinking we do see NXT guys in the Rumble because they're tr- they are really pushing for it to be a lateral, not mm-hmm. an up and you know up or down. Right, and um, I mean Dream Cole, Champa Cole. Like, can you imagine Champa with those freaking promos on NXT that he's been cutting, which have been fantastic? He comes in and just ruins everything for everybody, and he just takes that mic and he goes, Adam Cole, I'll see you at WrestleMania. Oh my god! I'd lose it. I'd lose it. Well, like, here's here's what I said last night uh, when we were talking about worlds collide because DIY is going to be wrestling Mustache Mountain. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's true. And I'm all good with DIY winning, but immediately after that three count is done, I want Champa to just beat the holy hell out of Gargano because <laughs> then you can either a continue that because yeah, they might have done it for a year. But I could go for another year of that. And we didn't really get a conclusion. Right. Or we can bring him up, have him win the Rumble, and run roughshod through NXT, let him sit up on Raw and run roughshod through there, and then declare, say, sometime after Elimination Chamber, I want the NXT champion. Hmm. Oh, I, I, I want Goldie back. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I just... Because he's yeah. always said I'm NXT, period. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, dude, that <laughs> gave me, like, chill bumps everywhere. WWE, if you're listening, and I know you are, did you write this stuff, bro? Right, but see, that that's... Listen, just listen, buddy. Just listen. Like, this all just literally came off the top of my head. That's oh, how good. easy it is to be creative. And I'm not saying I'm the most creative in the world. What I'm saying is it's super easy to just let creativity fly off your tongue and roll with it, and it's a lot harder to be uncreative. Could you slowly. imagine... Could you imagine if Shayna and Ciampa won the Rumble, NXT just took over? And they both challenged for the NXT title at Mania? Mm-hmm. Oh, bummer. No, I don't want that. I want Shayna to come after Becky. But I do want Ciampa to go after Cole. Yes, I do want that. I mean, like, yeah, Rhea Ripley, Shayna, really fun. But, like, Shayna I'm over it. as the champion on Raw would just light my fire. Yeah, and it would open up. It would open up Ronda. Abilities. Like Ronda could come back and challenge. That would be sick because it'd be like horsewoman or horsewoman. Yeah. You know, like yeah, there's so many possibilities. It's just so depressing because of watching the creative that we've had for the last four months, four well, weeks, really. You know, backlog at months. I just don't have faith in them to do something cool. I know, but we can dream. That's what we do here at DYWTSB. We try to write it. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're trying, people. We're trying for you guys. Because it's easy, like Pop said, it's easy to come up with things that us fans would enjoy. It's hard to come up with things that fans wouldn't enjoy. Yeah. You know, and Arn says that, too, uh, on his show, Arn, just Arn. Anyway, but it's it's super easy just to listen to the crowd. It is. And, you don't have to give them what they want right away, but why not give them what they want? They're the ones that are your paying the bills. At least give us fucking breadcrumbs, goddammit. Yeah. Give me something. Give, I don't care if you ever give it to me. Give me something to believe that at some point I might get what I want, and I'll continue to watch, but right now you're pushing me away at the most fun time of the freaking wrestling year for WWE. My like, favorite paper wheel. <laughs> so I'm hoping... Because we are going to get into the road to WrestleMania next Monday after the Rumble. All the I'm sign hoping. pointing. The sign pointing. Yeah, all the stupid sign pointing. I can't wait. You know, we're gonna we're gonna have some good television. I have that much faith because I have to I have to for this time of the year. Because it's my favorite time of the year. It's like my this is my Christmas. You know, <laughs> I just celebrated for a couple months. <laughs> so. I could talk a lot. And... Closing thoughts? Yeah. Okay. Closing thoughts. So, one year ago, 
on the 27th officially, but this this wrestling weekend can count, okay? This is when it happened. We had a takeover and a Royal Rumble, and a, li- a guy named Pops found my tweets randomly in the Twitterverse and DM'd me, and we started talking, and it has led me to be on this amazing show with two of my best friends, Mort, obviously, and Pops. So, one year ago, Pops discovered the, <laughs> the little queen over there talking trash about something, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't remember what I tweeted last year, but talking something. And um, fast forward to one year later, I get to talk wrestling with my best friends every single week. How dope is that? So I just want to say thank you for paying attention to Twitter hashtags or something. And <laughs> thank you for bringing me on the show. Because now we have this. And this is the best. So that's my closing thought for this Royal Rumble weekend. Also, I hope everybody enjoys all of the wrestling that goes on. And uh, I'm hoping we get a really fun Royal Rumble. My turn. Or yep. if you want to go. No. My turn. Oh. My closing thoughts. I don't think. I, I what I'm more proud of is how the show has evolved over the last year. I think that we've made some changes, we did some things better, we made some hiccups, but we've never given up on each other. You guys have never given up on me, which is I don't even it was mind blowing because I'm I'm an asshole at points. But uh, what I what I like though, and I, you say that you know I discovered you. But what I like is that I think that um, our confidence in you gave you the confidence to go out and do all the cool things that you're doing. I mean, you're out there, you got your own show, Queen's Court, and Queenie Chats, and Queenie Does Fashion, and so hashtag Queenie Cooks today. <laughs> hashtag Queenie dis- Destroys Twitter. Right. <laughs> ha- hashtag Queenie to Cool People. Uh, you know, like, Alicia, that's how part two is coming out. Sure. Right. Uh, so, I mean, look, we're a family, uh, and we've like I said, we're going to have some fun. We're going to not like the same things. We're going to like the same things. And we're always going to be friends at the end of it. Unless Bobby Lashley wins. And I really think you guys are going to fire me as your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I would be more pissed off if, if Lana fucking wins. Over- oh, that would just destroy would just, everything. I would cry. Um, and then just real quick, uh, closing thoughts. I want to thank everybody who responded to the uh hashtag DYWTSB rumble box giveaway um it's not technically our first giveaway but it's going to be our biggest giveaway i think um and yeah i appreciate everyone that listens and keep coming back i mean we're 10 away from 100 which means that we're 14 away from two years Ooh, the lolly and that's not steiner math if you want to get technical our two year is February fourteenth. Oh, Valentine's Day! Valentine's Day! Aww. Oh, that's so cool. We, we get we got two year anniversary on Valentine's Day, and then fifteen days after that, we're gonna go to a new home and launch the DYWTSB network officially. So I guess that's a official announcement that on leap year, the twenty ninth, we're gonna. We're going to start doing some really fun things, I think. All right. Uh, Mike, we're going to have a couple, couple closing thoughts. First, go go to powerslam.tv on, on, on your computer, type in a little code, DYWTSB, for a free month. And my other closing thought is the last year of wrestling talk with Pops and Queen has been freaking fantastic. You guys are my couple of my best friends and I wouldn't change change things for the world. Oh. This shit got too sappy. Can you just do that? This has been Talk your to you all. <laughs> <laughs> this has been your episode of DYWTSB. Talk to you all next week. <laughs>